If the Hebrew language is constructing reality, there's a chance its functionality is like a programming language. If this is the case, can we find familiar elements like ones, zeros, and bits in the Hebrew language? In this video, I'll show you how these elements are immediately present in the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph and Bet. For starters, it's important to know that one and zero are parallel to turning an electrical system on and off. In modern computers, one represents the presence of electrons in a certain amount of superconducting material. When this material is drained of electrons, the computer reads as zero. Aleph can represent both one and zero, existing in a singular superposition between these binary states. Here's how. Although Aleph is a singular letter, it's also a word that can be spelled out. Right to left, Aleph, Lamed, Pe. These letters evolved from ancient pictographs that represented an ox head, a shepherd's crook, and a mouth. In the ancient Near East, the ox was the power that drove the plow, thus driving agriculture and ultimately civilization. The word for ox in these ancient languages was aleph, hence its representation as an ox head. Latin letters evolved from the same roots that produced Hebrew. You can still see this relationship in our Latin letter A that when flipped upside down resembles an ox head. In the Shema, one of the central verses of the Torah, it's stated that God is one. Because Aleph is at the head of the alphabet and equal to one, it's often said to be the letter most directly representative of God. L, the first two letters in Aleph, means God in Hebrew. El is at the beginning of certain names of God like Elohim, El Shaddai, and El Elyon. The Lamed is a shepherd's crook. This is a governing instrument. It's easy to see how El can represent God and power. El also means to and towards to indicate movement or action. The driving force of the ox can be seen here too. The third letter in Aleph is Pe. Pe means mouth in Hebrew. Pe is called a sophit letter because its shape changes when it's on the end of a word, from a closed to open form, like a closed mouth opening. In the culture surrounding the Hebrew language, it's understood that God creates the universe with his word. Verse 3 of Genesis illustrates how God speaks luminance into existence. Aleph is a beautiful representation of this, where the power of El is manifest through an open mouth. Original electrical machinery had a mechanical switch that toggled between on and off, like flipping a light switch. In an analogous way, when the letters of Aleph are flipped, they produce the word Pele. We'll quickly break down the word Pele in the same way as above. When L, representing power, is flipped, we get the word Lo, which means not, no, nothing. This is our off, or zero. The pe, now at the beginning of the word, changes form to a closed mouth. We went from power with an open mouth to nothing with a closed mouth. Pele is the word that means things like incomprehensible, mysterious, and miraculous. The experience of incomprehensibility involves something beyond the bounds of our understanding of reality. Outside the realm of the explained and unexplained, there are things we don't know we don't know. This is the place from which the miraculous and incomprehensible emerge. The idea of nothing is not graspable by the mind because the mind is something. Certain meditators have spent decades focusing on this nothingness, claiming to have glimpsed it for fleeting moments, unable to describe it without betraying it as something. Even endless pure darkness is a thing when compared to true nothingness. The idea that there is the potential for existence in this absolute nothingness is the ultimate incomprehensibility, completely miraculous, wonderful. Aleph is the superposition that represents all knowable aspects and the absolute unknowability that these aspects arise from. Back to computers. A bit is a position in binary code that can contain either a one or a zero. Think of the original punch cards from which binary originated. An area of paper could either be punched or not, so every designated area on the paper housed a possibility. The second letter in the Hebrew alphabet is bet. Bet is the Hebrew word for house, like in Bethlehem, meaning house of bread. When this letter begins a word, it's a preposition, meaning in. For instance, the first word of Genesis starts with a bet, translated as in the beginning. Bet is spelled bet yod tav. 
Following the evolution of these letters into our Latin alphabet, these letters became B-I-T, as in bit. The superposition between 1 and 0 that Aleph represents is contained by the bet, so in this way, it's the conception of the inconceivable, thus the perfect letter to start off creation in the beginning. The consonants in bet, bet and tav, spell the word daughter. This is the feminine principle. Think of the womb that serves as the protective walls for a being to grow from seeming nothingness into substantiality. A quick recap. The Aleph is a singular entity that can manifest polar opposites such as on and off, one and zero, all and nothing. To be at once dual and singular is inconceivable without the abstract element of Tunis, which is embodied in the Bet, or Bit. So now that we have Aleph and Bet placed in a conceptual framework, we'll bring in one final piece. With these two letters, we can spell the word Ab, meaning father. The existence of a father implies a mother. Here we see an image of the union of creation, the creative principles of computation enshrined in a name spoken by its product, humanity, who themselves are learning to use computers to create vast simulations. While this video has touched on some simple ideas involving the foundation of computation and its relationship to Hebrew, the true computational power of Hebrew is inherently incomprehensible. Consider writing a computer program that not only created a universe with beings, but could also be read by the beings at every level of understanding to tell the story of the writing of the program, describe how it creates the universe, and detail the journey the evolving beings are on to realize not only were they created, but they themselves could create worlds of their own. While the task of decoding this system is seemingly unapproachable, humans have already been on the job for thousands of years. I'm convinced this inquiry holds the solution to the world's medical and socioeconomic problems. The purpose of this channel is to introduce a new generation to this mysterious and wonderful conversation. Please join us for the ride.